Busy has left. I just want to, there's just a message come up here. Okay, just a message that popped up about being recorded. Okay, hi everybody, and welcome to our May um, demo. It's not really a demo, but anyway, um, I hope you're all well and warm. And I want to say a very special welcome to new members, Linda Ray, Andre Ricks, Cara Jo Trudeau, and Birgit Bush. We're really looking forward to meeting you in person sometime soon. Tonight, we welcome well-known Cape Town artist and adventurer, Yvonne Ankerman, who has been making wonderful videos um, on YouTube, which she puts on YouTube and getting quite a few subscribers along the way. Um, she has made one, especially for us this evening, on sketching and journaling. As you would have read in our newsletter, I really encourage you to get outside to places where it's easy to socially distance and to enjoy our beautiful sunny winter days that we have here in Cape Town. And I saw a comment from Lynn Northam while admiring a sketch done in Cork Bay yesterday. She said, Sit, sitting on, on one's rocking chair at 90, looking at all those sketchbooks is going to bring so much joy and even smiles. So I think sketching is a wonderful way of, of keeping a diary and, and will bring much joy later on in our lives. Um, okay, so I'm going to ask, yeah, please, if you have any questions for Yvonne to use the chat function, or you can WhatsApp uh, me on 0723221745, and I will ask Yvonne the questions afterwards. Okay, over to you, Yvonne. Hi, can you hear me, Sue? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, well, welcome everybody. It's, um, and thank you very much for asking me to do this uh, presentation. And as uh, the, the members will see, I, I did a pre-recording, so it's almost like a video, but with demos and everything in it. And yes, please, if there's any questions along the way, you can just ask Sue and I'll answer them at the end. But um, as I was saying to Sue earlier, I, at the moment, sort of, I think it's because of the lockdown, it's, sketching is all I want to do at the moment. I can't sort of sit still in my studio and do some big serious painting. I, all I want to do is get out there in the fresh air and, and um, maybe because of this sort of lockdown uh, feeling that we were trapped in a way and I, I just want to get out and, and be out there and it's, it's such fun. And I think um, if you do it regularly, you really get hooked. Uh, you want to do more and more, you want to learn more and more, and there's hundreds of videos um, on YouTube which are free that you can have a look at to learn a lot more. There's lots of books, and I think it's just a, a really fun way to, as Lynn Northam said earlier, you know, if, if you, later on, when you can't go out anymore, maybe if you're sitting in your rocking chair and you want to look through your books, I promise you, you will remember every single sketch that you did you will remember where you sat what the weather was like who you were with and that is the real joy I think about about sketching is those memories of a later when you look through and whether it's with um, journaling or not with journaling um, I think that is something that's going to bring real joy later on but I think that's that's it for now and I think we can maybe start with the presentation Hi again, every from, everyone from CAS. So I'm going to talk a little bit about travel sketching today. And I've been painting for many, many years, and but this is actually what I really, really enjoy doing. It somehow takes the pressure off having to create a finished painting, something that you might uh, need to sell for an exhibition, or you might be sitting in your studio thinking something is not quite working. And this way of just sketching and travel sketching, you can relax. You can uh, you can do it, for instance, in a in a watercolor book that you could uh, take a piece out later and exhibit that in a portfolio at an exhibition. 
But for me, it's the pressure's off. You get to get out of your normal environment and uh, you can do what you really enjoy. So it can, you know, travel sketching doesn't have to be, especially in these, um, in this pandemic, pandemic time, it doesn't have to be traveling overseas. So don't think you just need to take a, a sketchbook with you when you go on holiday. This is for, for pretty much for every day. It could be down the road from you. Uh, here, for instance, in Colt Bay, you all know the place. Fantastic place to sketch. And this is where I'm going to be starting my talk today. But it could also be in your, in your garden. Um, see what you've got outside. Uh, what about some flowers and some plants and maybe the view? Uh, in Cape Town, pretty much, you know, there are views all, all, all around us. And it can, of course, be on holiday as well, wherever you go. So these are, uh, this is a collection of the various sketchbooks that I have. Uh, there are many, many different kinds. So I'm just going to do a very quick uh, flip through. It can be something with uh, writing in as well. So just especially when you are on holiday or you're traveling, you can write where you've gone and, and what you've done. I quite like these brown paper sketchbooks. Uh, this, these are, I think they, Hannah Muller, they're not great watercolor quality, but it does sort of flatten out quite nicely. What I like about it is you can really add your lights later, but I'll talk about that. Uh, the size that I really like to travel is the A5, but this, for instance, this A4 is also great. And um, I even have uh, a bigger A3 book. I like the, uh, well, I use the moleskin quite often. That's sort of 200 to 250 gram. I have a Strathmore from the UK, which is 400 gram, which of course is wonderful but not, uh, not necessary. And uh, yeah, so I have various kinds I take with me and it just depends where you go and how heavy your bag is, what you can take with you, whether it's uh, on holiday, down the road. Um, you, you can even use just uh, watercolor stretched on, on a board if it's local and that anyway you can use later as well. So these are just fantastic memories for, for later on, just to go through and remind you of where you've been, especially if you do write some notes on there. I think that's a great idea. I feel I don't do enough writing. I, I basically write where it is and, and that's it. But I really want to, in the future, do a little bit more writing. And so I can just re be reminded of uh, exactly where we are. And as I say, not far. So I live in Simonstown. This is down the road from me. And this was a week ago with the uh, Cape, uh, the Cape um, Painters, Sketches, Plain Air Sketches group. And you can ask uh, Sue how to get in touch with them if you are interested. We had uh, quite a rainy day, but it was wonderful. So the weather was awesome. It actually started quite misty. And so you never know what you're going to get when you when you go out there. We were all surprised by this really wonderful fog that was there early morning. And actually, I had forgotten my watercolor paint. So I just had a pencil and a type of graphite water-soluble pencil that gave me a little bit of a wash. But it was it was wonderful day out there. And we didn't really get wet. We stood under the, the, the coverings there. We saw the fishing boats come back with their catch. I stood here and I think these are snook. Uh, I'm not that uh, clued up on my on my fish, but I think they look like snook. And this was done in the in this brown paper sketchbook of mine. And I did a quick rough drawing with my calligraphy pen. I'll, I'll explain more about that later, but just quick from life. So they don't look super wonderful and perfect and they don't have to be perfect. And, but because it's on the brown paper, I use a white gouache with it. So I have one little tube of white gouache, otherwise I don't have any gouache, although I think it is a nice medium to use. 
And I mix that with my watercolor. So in this sense, I've mixed it with a bit of uh, Payne's gray, and it comes out this nice bluey, dark sort of gray, bluey color. But as I said, with this particular paper, it is quite thin. And so you can't make your washes too watery, and they're not that great for wet on wet. But I just wanted to give it a general color first, and then come in with some darker here and there. Now, these little things in the middle of the of the snook, that was actually ice that they'd put on there. And obviously to keep it nice and fresh and cool for when someone was going to come and buy. And they had quite a lot of fish that day. I was there probably until after lunch and most of the fish were still there. So I'm not quite sure when people actually come to, to buy. But to get there first thing in the morning, we start sort of nine o'clock. But to get there even earlier would be the perfect timing. And they are so friendly there. They actually love having artists. And they always come and have a look and see what you're up to and comment. And, you know, that that is the thing about plein air sketching. Not to worry about what anyone says about your, your painting. You'll get used to people looking over your shoulder, have a bit of a chat to them. They're the locals there. They, they love it that you are actually sketching what they what is their business. And... Um, it's sort of uh, an honor for them, if you if you like, that we find what they do interesting enough to go and paint and to sketch. The other thing about plein air sketching, especially on our, our Monday group, as I said, anyone can join, is that you get to see your other art friends. So I know a lot of you join particular classes. You have this meeting once a month and lately you haven't been able to go to the meetings, hence all these Zoom type of meetings. This is the ideal way to get out there and to see those people that you haven't seen for, for ages and just experiment. You know, so what if it doesn't come out? Then you paint another one. And if that doesn't come out, you paint another one. And by, you know, by doing that again and again, that is when you learn and that is when, when you get more confident about being out there, about not, not worrying what anyone says about your painting in particular. And we, well, I particularly take, most of us take a, a flask of coffee or tea some sandwiches, some fruit, and we're there till about lunchtime or just after lunch. I normally don't have breakfast, so I, I have my little sandwich sort of at tea time, 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. I feel I'm really ready for it, and then it gives me a bit of a break in between. And it is just absolutely the best thing. So uh, be sure to ask Sue later on just for some of the details and she will give them to you. So sorry for a bit of a wobble. And you can see that this white is just ideal to bring out the subject in your book. Now this page did buckle a little bit, but because the uh, gouache was added to the watercolor, it tends to dry pretty quickly. Just some details in the eye and uh, some white around it and a bit of a shadow at the bottom and that would be all you actually need. They came in with some more fish. These are type of snapper, I guess. I just love the color. Uh, it's not, I'm not a big fish eater. So I do sometimes feel sorry for these things. <laughs> But, I mean, the color was wonderful, so I had a bit of a, a sketch of these ones as well. And then, when was it? This last Monday, I, uh, our group was met at Cog Bay again. We, so we tend to go back to the same place two or three times just to get a feel of the place, to sketch different things. And we had a glorious sunny day, and I loved this like, little mini type of tugboat look. I feel mine came out uh, quite chunky and chubby. But, you know, it's 
that's what it is. And uh, later on, I added a bit of pen work, which I didn't have time to do at the place. So just loads and loads of things you can do. Same, this is the other sketchbook without the wire in the middle. Same boat. These two are normally on the dock next to each other all the time. Very, very interesting to, to see different, different boats and learn to sketch and draw boats because, you know, I've been terrible at drawing boats and it's just down the road from me. It's actually ridiculous that we don't go more often. So these are, this is great, great exercise to do. But when I'm at home, I would use this type of ceramic palette for my watercolors. Watercolors, I have two or three different palettes. If you want to know more about my travel uh, sketching pack, I have a YouTube video that just, it's about 10 minutes or so, all about what's in my sketch, uh, my sketch pack. So all my brushes, the paper I take, the, the palettes and, and everything I use. So if you are interested in that, have a look at that. I'll leave the, um, I'll mention the details right at the end. But when I'm at home in the studio, I often use a ceramic palette. These are more or less the, the brushes, paints. I like the Daniel Smith paints. I use Winsor Newton, Dale Arani, whatever, whatever I have or um, I've been given presents of, that is what I use. And I am not really one to stick just to one brand. Uh, I think my favorite at the moment is Daniel Smith. But, you know, these paints are, are expensive as they're all imported. So whatever I've got, I make sure I use it uh, till the end. So I like the tubes and I actually squeeze the colors that I like into my palette. Let it dry a bit and then I use that. So I don't really buy the, the ready the little pans that have the sort of chosen colors from the shop. So I like to choose my, my own colors. This is another thing I use, the golden uh, acrylics. They, um, this is fluid acrylics and a golden, it's called high flow, high flow acrylic. And they sort of the consistency of thick cream and you can water it down with water. And, but just remembering that once you do put it down on the paper, they are staining. So they, they don't lift at all, but you can of course paint with white over it again and then fix things that way. But I do use these quite a lot. These are, are really great intense colors. Brushes, I have a few flats. I love my mop brushes. There's the three in the middle there with a wooden um, stem. And I have various sizes. All, you know, details of this type of thing and how it works is all um, in my YouTube videos. You can watch them if you go back. I've got about 12 videos and uh, on various subjects. And you can have a look at that. But I like my dip pen. I have calligraphy pens, a size one, two, and three. These are water resistant. They sort of flat on one side and sharp on the other side. And it's it's wonderful. So you can paint over it, doesn't smudge at all. Uh, a jelly roll uh, is a white marker. So it'd be great for the brown paper or to put the little highlight in an eye or something like that of a bird. Or um, So great for just little highlights at the end. And a couple of uni pens. I've got various sizes and my uh, my brush, watercolor brush there. I also use these charcoal drawing pencils. They are great, and you can see the effect that they have. So it just sometimes brings the whole thing together. This was at uh, Cape Point at Olifant Sports. Uh, plain air did while my husband was birding along the coast. But these charcoal pencils are worth experimenting with. Just remember that when you close your book, it's going to smudge on the previous page. So you might need to just spray it with some hairspray or fixative. But as I said, you don't have to go far. Um, recently, I was ill in bed for a few days and sketched the things around me. My watercolor palette, my brush, some dried flowers water bottle. Um, as I said, I wasn't feeling too well. So my Vicks, my Panado, you know, you can just, um, there's always something, something to paint. Even around the house, I had been given wonderful orchids for my birthday. 
So decided to just stand in the kitchen and paint those or to be outside in the garden. Uh, we have a wonderful Feinbos garden, uh, mainly mountainside, so not much uh, planted things. So it's, it's pretty much mountainside. And especially this time of the year, you get, uh, when the rain first starts, you get the most wonderful colors and flowers and wildflowers that you don't normally see popping up. So it's great to get out there, just put your chair out there and sketch and paint that. It's, you know, once you start sketching, it feels like you are on holiday and you're getting away from the normal thoughts and stress and whatever is around you and you forget about everything. So it's a great thing to do. We also have pin cushions and um, uh, proteas. And then also not having to go very far. Uh, we pretty much go to Harold Porter quite often, Botanical Gardens. This is on the other, or between Pringle Bay and it's sort of near Betty's, or oh, it's in Betty's Bay. And there's, there's a lot of things you can do around there. Flowers that pop up, uh, various sketches, the, the waterfall. Uh, great to go sketching over there. And in Kirstenbosch Botanical Gardens, uh, we also go pretty often. My, as I said, my husband's a birder, so he goes birding and I take my paint things with me. And this is just to show how I started the flowers by spraying a, the paper a little bit first and uh, splattering. I love my splattering. And then coming in with more color and then detail at the end with some pen and ink. Uh, so quite often I, I paint without doing a drawing first, just putting color down there and seeing where it takes me. You can always put in detail later, but then you've got this almost 3D effect. You've got the flowers or the, the idea of color and flowers in the distance, and then you've got the more detail in the front, and then it prevents it from looking like um, sort of like a stiff, stiff flower. This is uh, near Komiki. I remember this was extremely windy day. And you can see here on the right-hand side with my hair is actually, <laughs> my hat is blowing. It was crazy uh, windy. I had to put these clips on this tiny little sketchbook just to keep the pages from um, staying in the same place. And, you know, it, this, this sketch is messy. It's, uh, it's, what was happening at the time. And if I look at back on it, I will always, always remember that it was a extremely windy day uh, near Komeke. And I just love the, the, the colors and the feeling and some of the birds flying over. Uh, yeah, so you, you don't experience that when you sit in your studio. Uh, some shells that you pick up, you can do a quick sketch over there as well. Uh, I've added the white later with my Posca pen. So that wasn't in my photograph earlier, but Posca pen is an acrylic pen. In, you get it in various thicknesses, but you could use the jelly roll as well just to add some of the highlights if you've lost it. This is Cape Hunclip right on the other side in the early morning that uh, we went birding and I took my watercolors with and the sun was just coming over the side and I took a seat and sat on a rock and just lovely, quiet. Um, these are special moments that, that you don't forget. But it doesn't, if you can't travel that far, it doesn't have to be two hours drive or an hour drive or even to Colt Bay. You can, this is at the local shopping center at Long Beach Mall. They always have flowers there to sell especially on a weekend but Irene Oxley was having an exhibition in the in the mall and some of us went to go and paint and sketch so I sat down by these flowers and uh, did quite a few sketches from here so there is subject matter everywhere and here I'm just going to show you a section of my video and um, these are thistles they were actually in a flower arrangement and I painted various parts of the arrangement and these of course last the longest so I had time to wait and so I'm going to show you the middle section if you would like to see the whole video from start to end I have a YouTube video on that you can um, have a look at your own time 
and I will explain things as we go along. Now I'm going to, the painting's a little bit dry or dry enough for me to work on. And I'm going to define the thistle flowers a little bit. So I'm going to take my ultramarine blue, same one that I used earlier with a little bit of alizarin, alizarin crimson. I'm gonna make some of it a little bit darker than what they actually are, because you do need, you do need a bit of contrast, otherwise it doesn't really stand out as the flowers. I'm using a slightly smaller mop brush, and this is just, just loose. Don't worry um, that everyone is going in the correct direction, just so that you have a type of feeling of what they are. As you can see, this mop brush sucks up a, a huge amount of water. So it's great to use. I think in a painting, be careful about having everything too light. Because then you don't, if you don't have that contrast, it just, you know, especially if you look at it from a distance, it just all looks too, too bland in color. Just always add a little bit more than is actually there. If you might say, oh, well, that is not what it really is, looks like. But, you know, nobody's going to ask you later on, show me the photograph of what it really looked like. So you've got artistic license to do anything you want to do. Just giving, putting some of these things in here. A little bit more detail. You can put the green in on this sort of purple while it's still wet and then again it'll join together or blend together and um, just give it a much softer feel. So even if some of the leaves turn out to actually be purple, it doesn't matter. I think your eye finishes off the painting for you. And it just, by blending these colors together, just gives it a nice, soft, soft feel. I think these, with, you know, I'm doing this in, uh, I live in Cape Town, South Africa. And I'm sure these thistles look a little bit different to what you are used to. I remember taking the most wonderful photographs in the Algarve in Portugal of thistles. And they were huge. Absolutely huge. So ours are not anything like that. But they seem to be becoming more and more popular in flower arrangements. So I don't know if any of you saw my Instagram post a few days ago. I I actually these these thistles were in a big vase with cornflowers and other little purple things and really really lovely. So I did do a painting of the cornflowers, but I left the thistles out. So I thought I'd have a little bit more time to do them as they last slightly longer. Now I might even add a touch of indigo, really dark here and there, while it's still wet, just sort of that you get down into the heart of the uh, of the flower. I 
as you can see, it just adds that little bit of a extra oomph to the to the painting. Greens, I'm going to just darken a little bit right there. With a little bit of ultramarine again. So that's how I'm going to leave it for now. I will decide later on if I want to add uh, pen and ink to it or a little bit of charcoal sketching, maybe a water type of graphite water pencil. It might just add um, a little bit more texture to this watercolor. So if you like just purest watercolor, you leave it as is and uh, you might take, decide to take it further. I think I might decide to take it further and if so, I will continue with the video so that you can see what I've done but uh, we'll leave it like this for now just to let it dry and you can see that it, it goes pretty quickly you've just got to be uh, confident in your brush strokes i know that comes with time but you know who cares if it doesn't work out you can always try again and uh sometimes mistake you learn from your mistakes sometimes they're happy mistakes they make big uh, cauliflowers or what we call blotches or cauliflowers or backgrounds, whatever you call it. And they can actually add to a painting. So don't worry if it's, uh, if you think, oh no, this and this has happened, it doesn't matter. What I'm going to do is I love my splattering. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that just to give it a bit of texture as well. And uh, we'll take it further from there. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, this is the end result. Maybe a little bit bright in this, this photograph. I came in with a charcoal pencil and that just gave it that little bit of oomph that, that it needed. But as I say, I've got a whole video on this and that's why you heard me talk about uh, the thistle flowers in different parts of the world. Now, if you travel, this is the ideal time to have your sketchbook. But, you know, to not be overwhelmed by what you see, you've, in a way, have got, to, have got used to being out there, get used to people watching you sketch, not worry about, they think, you, yours is always going to be better than theirs anyway. They, and normally they love what everybody else does. So, so don't worry at all about what other people think or if they ever look over your shoulder. So this is a wonderful way to record to record your travels. The other day I flew to KZN because we're not allowed to go overseas yet and was sitting in the departure lounge and decided to do the airplane. Huge exercise in perspective. I'm not quite sure if I got it right, but you know, if you never do it, you'll you'll never know. So I do normally travel a lot with my job as artist in residence on expedition ships. So this is inside uh, the basically art class. And I'm giving a demonstration to the various passengers there that uh, we do mainly pen and ink, watercolor. Um, I have from, from beginners to advanced, so it, can be quite challenging sometimes but it's lots and lots of fun and we do what we see around us so mainly if we down uh, south it might be uh, penguins and ice and snow and icebergs and if we up north maybe uh, puffins and walrus and things like that so when i am working we i have to drive zodiac as well which is these inflatable boats uh, that particular photograph was uh, on the right was in Greenland. But I do, as you can see, take my sketchbook with because you never know when you get the opportunity, right? So quite often my boss expedition leader will say, oh, Yvonne, today you don't have to do X, Y, and Z. Z you can sketch because they know I always carry my sketchbook with me. This is a video taken from the deck of our ship in the Lemaire Channel in Antarctica. 
just to give you an idea of the scale, I mean, this is a tiny, tiny, tiny area, but you can see that this is a pretty special and spectacular day. I mean, completely wind-free. The reflections were just awesome. And um, I mean, who, who can't like this sort of thing? So if you ever get a chance to go down south or north, in, in fact, uh, it is absolutely wonderful. Not all days are perfect. Here you can see the wind uh, blowing the snow off the end of the glacier and I sat on the on the ice and did a, did some sketching. And this is to show you it's not all perfect. These are tin strap penguins. That is a huge, huge colony of chin, chin strap penguins. Uh, this was in Deception Island. And it's an, an unbelievable sight when you go um, anywhere, anywhere that you have in summer season down south, you have all these different penguins. This particular video I'm going to show you here, it's a very short clip of the king penguins uh, swimming in South Georgia, which is a sub, sub Antarctica. <laughs> so excuse the quality and the sound of the wind, but when you're out there, you use what you've got. <laughs> And some of them actually look too scared to go in, <laughs> but they are um, well insulated. So this is a painting I did afterwards. I must say this was not a plein air painting, but I did it from, from the video for one of the guests on the ship that wanted the king penguins. And a sketchbook tour here of uh, the, this is a moleskin A5 of the various areas. So. Some look more finished than others, depends on how much time I have. I do like the pen work. It seems to work well in this sort of black, white, and blue world that we have uh, down south. And it's just, I mean, the watercolor of the water is also amazing. You really do have the almost Zanzibar type tropical water look um, but with these stark rocks so so very very special and a plein air sketching uh, session outside in Greenland with some of the guests and again in Greenland sketching the houses on the ridge but now coming back uh, in to South Africa and art, these are art retreats here that I offer. I did two last year, near the end of last year, uh, in uh, just outside Oetzoran and in Prince Albert. So we get out there and it is plein air sketching, watercolor sketching. Um, this particular one, Beth Lowe came with and did the oil version, and whereas I did the watercolor version. And Next year, I will be offering an art retreat in France. It's uh, in a little medieval village called Cheroux, uh, basically in the middle of France. And it's, it's a cooking and sketching retreat, which is uh, five or six days. And the cooking will, will, will be with uh, Marlene van der Westhuizen. She's a very renowned uh, chef here from Greenpoint. And they have a 
and house where they do all the um, art uh, cooking workshops from and we combining and doing a joint thing. So if you're interested in that, you can always um, contact me and I will be putting out info later on and advertising that anyway. And then in 2023, there'll be one in Morocco. So really looking forward to that as well. This is sketching in the Karoo on another art retreat. And then uh, Zanzibar, I was there um, last year, just before lockdown, before all this craziness happened. And we had a wonderful time uh, being out there in the sun, in the warmth and sketching the things around me. But as I mentioned before, I have a YouTube channel. At the moment, I've got 14 videos. There's uh, one particular one on painting in Antarctica, if you'd like to see more of that. I've got one of my, my travel sketchback, all the things you need to pack to take with you. Things on uh, painting puffins, if you like cute, cute little birds to paint. Lots of flower, uh, quite a lot of flower videos and uh, seascapes. And then, so you just click on that and then the subscribe button, don't forget the subscribe button. If you like it, please click the like uh, button. But this has been quite a challenge setting this all up uh, during this last year. And I've had to learn masses of things of editing. And when I'd rather be out there painting, I've had to learn this, but it will, it's been fun. It's been challenging and, and I'm really enjoying it. And then if you're on Instagram, this is my Instagram page that you can have a look at. So this is the YouTube page, what it will look like when you open it up. And then you can select as you scroll down the various videos, what you want to do is to making your own sketchbook, painting dragon fruit, roses, whatever. I've got quite a few out there. And that is the um, that is the end of the video. So I'm going to be going back to um, if I can just get the stop button. So I'm going to be asking Sue just to stop the video. Hi. Okay, Yvonne, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. I see you still muted, but uh, okay. Hope you can all hear me. Um, Yvonne, thank you so much. That's absolutely wonderful. You've got um, plenty of beautiful memories to look at when you're older <laughs> and um, some seriously lovely sketches of, of your trips to Antarctica and, and you know, that are really quite wonderful. Um, I, yeah, I just wanted to say that all the details to find Yvonne, you can find um, in our newsletter as well as on the link to this video meeting that Lizzie sent out. You'll find all the links to to see Yvonne's um, YouTube videos. Um, there's a message that's come through to say thank you. So it's from Win Rousseau. Thank you so much, Yvonne. I really enjoyed your informative talk and lovely sketches capturing your special plan air moments. Um, she says, I hang on. Oh gosh. I also love your flower paintings. And I wanted to say painting thank the flowers you. is so special because you know, often when you're given flowers as a gift. It's such a wonderful way to remember um, what, what you had received or what you got for Mother's Day last year or something like that. If you can just sketch them for your, just for yourself, for your, own, for your own memories. I think it's really wonderful. Um, well, that's, it. that's it. The flowers, um, the flowers are actually in my, my moleskin uh, sketchbook, which is a really, a really big one. And uh, it's a three book. And the, the, particularly the thistles one will be with me forever because they were in arrangement for uh, my dad's sort of um, celebration of life last year that we had last yeah. year. So it's so, so special. That's something you don't want to sell. You know, I, I do yeah. a lot of stuff in my book so that I will have it for later. Yeah. This. Thank you so much. That was. Oh, sorry, sorry, Sue, I, I can't hear you. Sorry, 
everyone. I think Sue's connection is playing up a bit. So I'm gonna just ask her to log back in for the rest of the Q&A. So just hold on for one second, please. I don't know if everyone can still hear me though. So I'm more than happy if anybody wants to contact me, come and um, have a look at some of my sketchbooks. Uh, I'd be you know, happy to come and show you. Just come, come to me, come to my house. Um, I live in Glencairn Heights near Simonstown and more than happy to chat to anyone that wants to have a look, wants to talk a little bit more about it and actually wants to see uh, the sort of equipment, my bag that I've got. Uh, as I said, I had a video, but you know, it, 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 I have no problem. Come and maybe we can go sketching together. So, so it's no problem if, if any of you want to do that. And if you haven't joined one of our Monday sessions of Plain Air Painters, the Cape Painters or Cape uh, Sketches, we do go out every, um, every Monday uh, throughout the year. And so one of us is always organizing it. And as I say, you tend to go back to the same place uh, two or three times, which, which is great because if you don't ha happen to finish, you can always finish it later. And um, it's a wonderful way to meet uh, new people, uh, to start sketching. I think last time I met Pat and his wife, uh, really nice, I've never met them before. So there's also a nice big growing, uh, growing group. And another, uh, another great group to join, if you're interested, is Urban Sketches in Cape Town. Uh, Lizette Sutherland organizes that and she lives here in Capri, but they organize once a month that you can, um, they, they organize a, a venue. So I think last weekend they went to Century City in, in, in Carter Island or whatever it's called. But uh, we tend to go to different places and a uh, super, super group to meet as well. So there's plenty, plenty going on. Um, you won't be bored. You won't ever be bored. So I'm not sure if Sue's back. Hi, she's not back yet. So I'm going to assume that her connection was is just playing up. It was playing up earlier when um, we did our test with Yvonne as well. Um, so I will be telling you what's been happening in the chat. <laughs> Belinda <laughs> okay. said, uh, that was amazing. Also inspiring. Thanks again, Yvonne. And okay. then Lynn Northam said, thanks so much, Yvonne, for such an up-to-date, great, inspiring, fun push to sketch. Everyone will want to join. You make it look so easy. And I agree with okay. it. So thank you very much, Yvonne, for a wonderful presentation. And, uh, I think everybody now wants to grab the closest thing that can make a mark and get sketching. And Great. We'll, we'll see you on the circuit. Okay. Thanks very <laughs> Good much. Night. Good Bye. Night. Bye. <laughs>